All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. So, yeah, so excellent prayer, officer. Uh, we got a lot of brothers and sisters that are, you know, sick or traveling. So we ask the Lord to give them traveling grace and the Most High restore them to health um, as soon as possible. So um, with that being said, we're going to go over health, we're going to go over marriage, and we're going to go over how to how to look for a righteous marriage, right? Because we have brothers and sisters in here that are single. You want to be married one day. We understand. So we'll give you the keys to getting there, all right? So, But let's start out with health first. Uh, give me the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start at verse 16, and we're going to read verse 17. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So in our walk in this truth, we trying to strive for that perfection, right? We trying to get there. We all trying to. You know, you first come in, you deal with certain things, and over time, you start to push those things to the side, right? Then there are other things that come about that you're still trying to improve on. You're trying to get better at, right? So the scripture says right here, all the scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, right? For reproof, for instruction in righteousness. Why? So that you could be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. So when we go over this class today, when we go over these scriptures, if you're cut, that's good. That's a good thing because it's meant to help you become better, to become that perfect man, that perfect, right? That holy man, that holy woman, that righteousness. Okay, so let's go to Sirach chapter 30, verse 15. Start at 14. So we're talking about health, right? When we look at the Bible, we don't look at Bible as, the Bible as a health tip book, right? You go look at these magazines or you watch YouTube videos on how to exercise and how to do these certain things, different diets and stuff, and that's all good. But guess where it all come from? The Bible. This is the book of life, right? Go ahead. Sirach so chapter 30, verse 14. Come on. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. So it says better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution, meaning body or health, than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. It's better to not have the best financial lifestyle or the best finances, the best savings account, but to have good health, right? To have good health in a state of body than to be have all the money in the world, but you can't live to enjoy it because you're unhealthy. You're on track to becoming a diabetic or you're on track to becoming cancerous, right, or obese or to have hypertension, right, blood, high blood pressure, right? We want to we reduce those health risk factors, correct? So the Bible tells us we, it starts with what? Having a good health or constitution of the body. Can you read? Health and good state of body are above all gold. It's better than gold. Go ahead. And it. And a strong body above infinite wealth. It, so it's better to have a strong body than to have infinite wealth, right? Come on. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. So there's nothing better than to have a sound body and to have a joyful heart, many of your mind. There's nothing better than that. You can have all the riches in the world but be fat, overweight, miserable. You, know, you understand? You've seen people like that. They, they got a lot of money, but they unhappy, Right? They, they, yeah, they got all the money. They could buy whatever they want, but they slop, right? They don't take care of themselves. So they get like, um, there was one of them eating. It might have been Rockefeller. He got like six or seven heart transplants because he's a rich man. So he don't have to take care of his body. He's like, I'm rich. I'll just buy your heart. You understand? Like, that's some wickedness right there. But that's the mindset of many of us. We talk about we want to be perfect. We talk about we want to be men of God, women of God, but we out of shape, we're out of shape. We heavy. We fat. Right? We out of condition. And guess what? It's it's all just a lifestyle change of eating better, exercising more. Right? You want to be fit. Right? You want to be able to shoot. We out there at camp. You men that 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 aren't part of Men of Valor that are going to be a part of Men of Valor. We need strong brothers. We need brothers that can protect themselves and protect their brother. But if you out of shape, you can't move. If you if you out of if you can't march from that door to that door. That's a problem. 25 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. Same with you sisters. Can't do three, four laps around the school. That's not good. Don't glory in that. Because, you know, give me uh, Lizzo. Pull up a picture of her. I'm going to show you something. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a rap. Is she a singer? She a rapper? What is she? She a single rapper. 
they what they doing is they getting these heavy, and it's another one too. She sang that song. Um, she got all the purple and green and stuff in her hair. She's real, real fat. I forget her name. Um, Tokyo, that's her name. Yeah, she on Love and Hip Hop. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all sis know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, so sister said no, they don't know. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. You see him like, oh yeah, I know her. Anyway, uh, that sister is 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 out of shape. She's heavy. She's obese, but she's glorified in the media, right? Why why they want our women looking like that, right? Why they want us being out of shape and healthy, unhealthy like that? Because they keep their medical system going, right? Pull up that picture of her real quick. Now try not to pull up one with her hair naked, please. If she have any that aren't. If she don't have none that ain't, don't pull up. But they teaching our sisters to embrace being heavy set, right? Being huh? or being out um, unhealthy. Now it's different than being, you know, some women and some brothers, they just have a thick frame, right? But they can still be in good condition, right? We're not saying that we ain't saying you gotta be 110 pounds. No, that's Esau. That's that Esau say you gotta be like that. And is then they cover a magazine. But what we're saying is be healthy, right? Be healthy, right? You got any pictures? Like this right here, like they're telling her or she says, you know, don't fat shame, you know, embrace your 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 size and stuff like that. Like you shouldn't embrace whopping down four big whop, uh, uh, double whoppers a day. Like you shouldn't embrace that. Like you shouldn't be happy that you eat that way. Right. We have to come out of that mindset. That's the mindset of the world. The world making us think like that. You got another picture. All right. Don't worry about it. Uh, read it again. Verse 16. Verse 16. Come on. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. Go ahead. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. It says it's better to die than to have a bitter life and continual sickness. Why are you always sick? Because you don't eat right. Remember the coronavirus is doing what? Remember that we had read that article about the uh, they had the vaccination day here in Jackson. And they interviewed an older brother. He said, yeah, my doctor sent me down here because I got hypertension I got clogged in one of my arteries. I got this. I got that. Diabetes. I'm a diabetic. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. He was going through. I was like, damn, this brother's sick as hell. Coronavirus going to destroy this man. That's why they're telling him to get the vaccine. Why do you think they're sending the vaccine in our communities? Because they know we're unhealthy. So they know what it's going to do to us. It's going to attack us. We got to be one step ahead of Satan, y'all. Always. So we got to. We have to strive, especially here in Mississippi, because Mississippi is known as what? The obese state. All of us got family members. I always talk about this, right? We always make this same uh, example. Your grandmothers, your aunties, your uncles, they have a whole row of medicine. They say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They got three, four pills for each day. Why are we living like that? We got the natural herbs from the earth. Why we got to eat, uh, why we got to take this medicine, right, to keep us from eating so much or eating the worst food, right? Kiri. Yes, sir. Okay, Death. go ahead. Read 17 again. Yes, sir. Death is better than a bitter life or a continual sickness. So it said death is better than a bitter life and continual sickness, right? Uh, go ahead. Delicates poured upon a mouth shut up are as messes of meat set upon a grave. Uh-huh. Go skip down to verse 21. Verse no, 20. no, verse uh, 23. Verse 23. Love thine own soul. You hear what the Bible say? Read it again. Love thine own soul. Some of you... You don't love yourself. Some of you husbands, you don't love your wives, bro, because you don't show her how she's supposed to eat. You don't truly love your children like you say you do because you feed the McDonald's and Burger King and filth every single day. For real, you're putting them on a track to becoming a diabetic. You're putting them on track to have a long, hurtful life full of continual sickness because you won't tell them to shut your mouth. We're not eating there. You're going to eat greens. You're going to eat mixed vegetables, multicolored vegetables. You're going to eat fruit, right? You're gonna, you can have meat, but in moderation, right? You have to do it. I know it hurt. I know it's a lifestyle change. I know us as black people, we've been eating a certain way for so long, but we got to change it, y'all. If we don't change it, we're going to be sick. And some of us could die. Some of us could die. Uh, un just out of nowhere, out the blue. And then leadership would say, well, y'all didn't know that the sister was unhealthy? Y'all didn't know that she was heavy set? Like, yeah, we knew it, but we didn't want to hurt her feelings. Hurt her feelings? Yes, love. 
Open rebuke is better than secret love. Here it is. I say, I love that my sister right there. I love my sister. But then I see my sister, it has a weight problem, and I don't tell her. I see my brother, he has a weight problem, and I never tell him. Is that love? If he dies, is that love? Absolutely not. I watched him. I had a hand in his death because I didn't correct him. You going to say something? Go ahead, Austin. Yeah, I'll pray to the most high. Um, this is actually a part of our repentance also. Just like we quit eating unclean foods, um, we now we started to discipline ourselves to even fast once a month. But that's a discipline within itself. And we will start to discipline ourselves to not eat as much. I, I remember when I first came in the truth, and probably y'all did the same thing. We was down in New Orleans, and um, I had quit doing drugs. So... When you quit one habit, you kind of pick up something else. So I used to be happy to get down there and get them big old Sabbath sandwiches. Boy, I used to turn them things up. But, and that made me gain weight because I had put one thing down and picked up something else. And that's what we have to be disciplined in. Because read, uh, verse, um, read verse 17 again. Verse 17. Death is better than a bit of life. Or continual sickness. A continual sickness. And some of the continual sicknesses we have, is it, it may be um, maybe cancer. My mama died from cancer. And she spent years battling that. Years. I mean, she would get right, then she'd go into remission back and forth. Her, um, her hair would come out. But anyway, we don't want to deal with that. And if we keep start to keep God's laws and discipline ourselves, I, I think I heard Bishop say he's, um, he's not always motivated. But he's always disciplined. Right. And that's what we got to have is discipline. All praise. Read 23 again. Verse 23. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. Some people eat because they're sorrowful. They got sorrowful hearts. You're depressed. Right? If you were, if you were the children of Israel and you know you're an Israelite and you got to keep the commandments, you shouldn't be depressed because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The reason you're depressed is because... Maybe there's some sin involved. Maybe you had to leave something behind in the world that you're holding on to and you're not willing to let go. So you eat to suppress that, right? The Bible says love your own soul and comfort your heart. Go ahead. Remove sorrow far from thee. Come on. For sorrow have killed many. Sorrow have killed many. Why? Because they overeat. They overthink. They're depressed. Come on. And there is no profit therein. And there's no profit therein. There's no profit in overeating. It's going to hurt you. It feels good to the flesh right now. But over time, it's going to start to hurt your body because these habits, you increase and increase and increase. Right? Read 25. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. See how you get the cheerful and good heart? Having a care for your what? Meat and diet. Meat and diet, meaning you're monitoring how much meat you're intaking. Because meat causes sickness. I don't care if it is chicken or lamb, which are clean, by the way. You can eat that. Those are lawful. But you ever seen a cow? Who's seen a cow before? You see how all day they just munch, yum, 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 all day. You see them even at nighttime, they be sleeping, sleeping, yum, yum. Not the hell. What you doing, man? They jaws just automatically just move. Or, no, they chewing. They, 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 they continue to regurgitate that food and chewing. So cow is a vegan, right? Cows don't eat no meat, but they fat. Big old fat cow can't move. You, if you ran out there after him, he ain't getting away from you. He going to just give up. He's going to kill me. It is what it is. I met my day. I'm coming home, Elizabeth. <laughs> He's still chewing while you slaughtering this behind. Why? Because even though they're vegans, they overeat. Because so, you can change your diet, but still intake too much, didn't take too many calories. So it's about training our body to be disciplined. This is why we tell you, brothers and sisters, which I don't know how many of you do it, but you should start doing it, the monthly voluntary fast every last Sabbath of the month. Right? Do the monthly voluntary fast. Why? It's going to train your body to take in a little. Because after you fast, you can't. If you, you barely eat and you full already. Like some after, the, after I fast, you'll notice I don't get this after Sabbath meal because the sisters bring me my salad. And once I finish that salad, I'm like, I can't eat no more. If I eat the after Sabbath meal, my stomach is going to explode. I'm going to be sick because your stomach shrinks. You got to teach your stomach to shrink. How do you do that? By training it to eat. Intermediate fasting even. Go ahead. I was about to say something. Go ahead. I just wanted to look at um, verse 30, verse 23 again. For it say, for sorrow hath killed many. Because sometimes in the sorrow, we, we maybe get depressed and we do something we eat. We, we call it comfort food. Right, right, right. That's right. You know, so you get so sorrowful, you might just go to your favorite haagen dazs ice cream or your favorite butter pecan or whatever it is. Right. Maybe unleavened bread. You just, you, I don't know. Whatever it is. But read it again. 
And just in the context of it's talking about from verse 14, 15, you know, talking about health. Then it jumped down to 23. Says, love thy own soul. Read that again. For sorrow. Yes, sir. For sorrow hath killed many. And there is no profit therein. Sometimes that so that's all I want. Sometimes that sorrow can cause you to go into depression and in what you go into something called depressed eating. I don't know if there's a political correct term right. for it. Um, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't let that sorrow get you so much to where you just feel a void of eating, trying to comfort yourself by right. eating. Right. That's not you comforting yourself by eating. That's you really you harming yourself. That's all. Skip over to chapter 31. Let's yes. read verse 12. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 31, verse 12. If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it, and say not, there is much meat on it. So a bountiful table, some of us don't have that, right, where we come home and our wife got freaking, I'm talking about food from one end of the table or to the other. This could be uh, translated or likened to a buffet, right? That's a bountiful table with a lot of meat, all kind of different meat, bread, all these things, sugary drinks, all that stuff. It says, be what? Read it again. If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it, and say not, there is much meat on Ooh, it. Ooh, look at all that meat. Ooh, man, I'm, give me the chicken. Give me the, uh, give me the limited steak. You give me a little bit of that lamb, too. I want a little bit of that. You be like, oh, man, this brother right here, this is right here. Pack plate this high. Right? That ain't, that, that's not good. It's not good. It tastes good. It feels good. But it ain't good. Right? Go ahead. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. Mm. And what is created more wicked than an eye? Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. Go ahead. Stretch not thine hand whithersoever it looketh. So you look, ah. Hey, you remember at Thanksgiving dinner, your uncles and aunties be like, bro, bro, come on, bro. Man, this is out the way. Let this dude get his plate, man. Because he going to knock everybody out the way to get the plate. Right? That's some of us. Some of us like that. I've been like that in my life. Hey, watch out. You know what I'm saying? Let me, get, <laughs> let me get up in there real quick. Go ahead. Stretch not thy hand with the so of it looketh, uh -huh. and thrust it not with him into the dish. Read 16. Oh, you finished it out? Yeah, read for 16. 16. Verse, yes, sir. Verse 16. Eat as it becometh a man those things which are set before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. So it said, eat as it becometh a man. It start with you men. You men control how your families eat. You tell your wife, no, we're not eating that. We're eating this. I want the kids to eat more vegetables. Like my middle child, Mariah, she don't like meat. She just will not eat meat for some reason. She'll eat, she eat lamb, sometimes chicken, but most times she just wants vegetables. And I, and I admire her for that because I like my meat. You understand? I admire her for that because that's what she just likes. She just likes to taste the carrots and fruits and stuff like that. Now, my oldest child, she'll eat meat. She'll eat whatever I eat. She'll get, what you getting? The four piece, I'm getting the four piece too. Then, dad, I tell her, hey, hold up, sis, dad, come on now. <laughs> you can't eat the big piece of chicken. That's for me, right? You know what I'm saying? But some, so, so your kids, we got to teach them how to eat. We got to teach our wives how to eat, so they can teach our kids how to eat. I know it's quick and it's fast to get the McDonald's and the Burger King. I know it's quick. You come home from work, you tired, wife tired, she don't feel like cooking. I understand. How about on Sundays you meal prep? How about on Sunday your wife take four hours in the afternoon to cook? Chicken or whatever it may be in portions, put them in little bowls, and hey, 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 daddy, he go, your, he go your plate for the for the day. Bam, he go to work. Everybody at his job eating out, eating like slobs. He's sitting in the back of the truck, or he's sitting whatever, whatever job you got, just eating something that his wife already prepared for him before the week even started. Right? Well, how about not that? Like we can do it, but we got to make the effort to do it. The problem is we'll do it for a while, and then we lose our discipline, and we'll fall off. How many of y'all have done that? Every last one of us, you start good, and then you fall off. You fall right back into that comfort. That's why the Bible said, eat as it becometh a man. It's up for you brothers. You brothers got to get your wives in order to make them eat better. Because she going to eat what you eat. If you say you ain't got to cook, let's order pizza. She going to say, whew, cool. Go, you want to pick a wing stop. All praises. I showed him feel like cooking. I just didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> so, we can't give them that outlet all the time. We got to say, okay, baby, well, let, let's go in here. Even if you got to help out. Sometimes brothers got to help out. Some of you brothers can cook. You go and you help out. Say, hey, look, all right, babe, you do this, I'm going to take care of the sides. Right? Whatever it may be. Key read. Leave off first for manner's sake. Leave off first for manner's sake. And be not unsatiable lest thou offend. And be not unsatiable lest thou offend because you look rude 
always sticking your hand in the pot to take all the food. You look rude. People looking like, man, this dude, he's just knocking everybody's elbow. He throwing bowls on them. You know what I'm saying? Trying to knock folks out the way to get to the food. Go ahead. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out, first of all. So that's called etiquette. He's given us etiquette and charity to not be the first one to throw our hands in the pot. Go ahead. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. You know why you overeat? Because you're not well nurtured. The reason it says a very little, well, I can just eat once a day and be good, or I can eat a little portion twice a day or three times a day and be good, it's because you're well nurtured. You practice this. You're disciplined in this. But the problem is when you're not disciplined, you start you get them pains, them hunger pains that really, really burn because you haven't disciplined yourself. Some of us can't fast because some of us are not able to fast because we haven't trained our bodies to take in less. Your body can do it. You, can, you know you can survive off water, right? Y'all know that, right? Because what does your body eat off of or feed off of when you don't eat in a while? Damn. Wow. <laughs> I don't really need to eat every single day. Although we love to. I know some of y'all think I'm crazy. Like, what do you mean we don't need to eat every single day? Well, what's a fast then? Christ fasted 40 days and 40 nights. How he survived? You understand? You, your body feeds off of the fat. So if you are already heavy set, all you got to do is just say, okay, two days a week, I'm going to fast. I ain't going to eat. Or three days a week, I'm going to just drink water. I'm going to water fast or drink bitter black coffee. I know it tastes bitter, but it's good. It's good for you. Right? It needs to be done. Right? So, key read. Read again. Verse 19. Verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. See? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Read that again. Read that again for me. Read it again for me. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. You don't have to eat all day, every day, three, four times a day. Come on. And he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. And you ain't got to worry about farting all night. Y'all wives know. You're him. Man, God, dog, man. Come on, man. What the hell is this, man? <laughs> he run us up out the bed. He run us up out the room, man. Right? Why? Because the way you eat, it forces you to do what? Forces you to pass gas. You fetch your wind. Stomach get the bubble as soon as you eat. Like spaghetti, man. It's too much red meat, bro. I love spaghetti. It's one of my favorite things. But after I eat spaghetti... Hey, you might get, leave me to myself for a while. <laughs> Don't come in here. Because it, it make your stomach bubble and stuff like that because it's so much red meat you intaking, right, along with noodles and sauce and all that stuff like that. That's not a good meal to eat all the time. It's fattening, right? So, key read. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Who has trouble sleeping? Be honest. Some of us have trouble sleeping. Now, some of it is for un other underlying factors, like your work schedule. You, you, you work a lot. You're stressed out. Staying. But a lot, of the, a lot of the reasons we can't sleep at night is because the way we eat before we go to sleep. Remember I used to say, when you eat bad before you sleep, what happened? You have nightmares or bad dreams, right? You heard that before? The Bible said the same thing. It don't necessarily say nightmares, but it just says sound sleep coming from moderate eating. Go ahead. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. He riseth early, and his wits are with him. How many people, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you, when you wake up, your mind ain't clear? It's like it take you a while. You in a hazy type uh, stupor. You, you can't fully get your thoughts together when you first wake up. That because of the way you eat the night before. If you constantly eat bad, when you wake up in the morning... You can't wake up in the morning, jump on Telegram real quick and ask a question in the scriptures. You got to sit there and look at it for a while like, John 316. You good? Give me about 10 minutes, man. I'll be all right. Let me just wash my face and get this. It's, it's because of the way you eat the night before. You're drowsy, right? Go ahead. But the pain of watching and cola and pangs of the belly or with an unsatiable man. You can't sleep because you toss and turn it because your stomach hurts. Because you're unsatiable. You eat bad. So all night you toss and then turn and talk about my stomach hurt, my back hurt. You understand? I, I feel like I got to throw up. All these things. Why? Because you overeat. You overindulge. You got to work on that. Right? This is a part of I know it's real quiet in here. You know this is real, real quiet in here. Because it's just, I can feel here a pin dropping this joint. You know why? Because we all can do this better. Every last one of us can do this better, including myself, the officers. We all can do better. Maybe not Officer Kaius, because he eat. You can do better. Officer Kaius, he can do better too, 
right? He already eat healthy, right? Go ahead. Hey, put that out, man. That thing going crazy right now. Please. It will kill us all in this junk. Read what you got. <laughs> and if thou has been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit. Ooh. Read. And thou shalt have rich. So it said, if, if if you be forced to eat, you know how your mama said, you better eat everything on that plate. And you be like, damn. All right. And you stuff yourself. The Bible says there are times where we forced to eat. We don't want to be rude. So we eat the whole thing. But it said, if you start to feel, hey, go and vomit. You're going to feel better because it's too much on your stomach. Right? Come on. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. He said, well, I'm telling you, going to happen. Go ahead. In all thy works, be quick. So, there, so shall there no sickness come unto thee. So you don't want to be sick. Go ahead. Whoso is liberal of his meat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Read that again. Whoso is liberal of his meat. Who knows what the word liberal means? Free. You just, I'm going to just eat whatever. Liberal upon me. Don't even take into consideration what it's doing to your body, how it's breaking you down. Go ahead. Men shall speak well of him. Read. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. So those that are liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him, right? The, the people that um, they understand that they can't eat too much, right? So it says that men shall speak well of him, like Officer Zacchaeus, for instance. I'm going to exhort this brother for a minute. He real liberal upon his meat. He don't eat meat that much. Passover, you'll see him eat a little bit of lamb to keep the commandments. But I haven't seen him pig out on hamburgers or or, or uh, a whole bunch of lamb, chicken. I've never seen him do it. And I've been knowing you five years now. Five years, I've known his brother. He's always been good with his diet, always. Somebody we can learn from that can give us good examples of how to eat, right? So... We speak well of him because of the report of his good, good housekeeping. Right? Go ahead. But against him, that is a niggard of his meat. Whoa. Y'all ain't know that was in the Bible, didn't you? Read again. Read again. But against him, that is a niggard of his meat. The whole city shall murmur. Everybody's like, ooh, look at old fat. Slobby. You know when you eat too bad, it come out your pores, right? You get to sweat and people smell that meat coming out your pores. You ever smell somebody, they be heavy set and they smell? It's because of the way they eat. It comes out of the pores. What you put in your body, just like when a brother drunk and he sweated out the next day. You can smell the alcohol coming from his pores. What do you think that is? What you put in your body, it comes out some way. Whether it's you passing gas or you burping, blurp, right? Or out of your pores. It smells, right? So the Bible telling you that right here. Read it again. But against him that is a nigger of his meat. You, you, you a nigger. You, you a nigger. <laughs> Go ahead. The whole city shall murmur. The whole city shall murmur. Everybody going to talk about you. Go ahead. And the testimonies of his niggerness. <laughs> <laughs> and the testimony of his niggerness. Y'all ain't know that was in the Bible. That's how you know it's a black book, man. I'm sick of these folks talking about Christ, a white man. This is the blackest book on earth. Damn niggerts. <laughs> We said we all niggers in here, and we don't repent. Go ahead. And the testimony of his niggerness shall not be doubted of. So it ain't going to be doubted. People going to be like, yeah, you right. His ad do eat a lot. <laughs> He's a nigger. Right, right, right. Right, we can see it, right? You're you going to say something else. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, skip over to chapter 39. Or what is it, 37? I ain't got my Bible. 37 and 20. It's 37 and 29, yep. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37 and verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. So don't be unsatiable in any dainty thing. Who likes sweets? Everybody likes sweets, man. Come on. Look at them kids. They, okay, yeah, y'all put y'all hand on up. We know y'all like sweets. Everybody loves sweets. We love when sister, sister Talia um, throw down on her unleavened bread. We all love it. And the other sisters, right? We love it. It tastes good. It's good bread, right? But the Bible says to be not unsatiable. In any dainty thing. Those dainty things, those um, sweet things, you got to use them in moderation. You can't eat cake and ice cream every day. You can't eat the little, um, my wife be making them little cookies or whatever, the, little, the chocolate chip cookie. Them things be fine too. Whoa, Lord. Them things hit the spot right before you go to bed. You be like, man, give us some cookies and milk, man. You know what I'm saying? Hit the spot. But the Bible tells us right here, don't be unsatiable. I mean, that's all you do is eat sweets, 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 sweets. You're going to end up getting what? Diabetes, 
other uh, disease, what like heart disease, things like that. Too much sugar intake, right? You, it's it's not good. Sugar was never meant to be good for the body. That's why the Lord gave us natural sugars, right? It was never meant to be indulged in to the point to what we've learned in America. You go through, you know, you go through withdrawals from sugar. You know that, right? You go through sugar withdrawals. You be eating that sugar, and then you'll stop eating sugar, and you'll be like, damn, I ain't had no sugar in a minute. Sugar, sugar, sugar. You get a sweat. What the hell? Bro, you want crack? No, nah, it's just sugar. I just like my sugar. Hey, yeah, uh, excuse me, Cal. You ever, uh, you ever gave some kids some um, some candy, just let them kids eat that candy, what they do? They go to bucket and jump it or kick right. it around because they done got a sugar rush. Right. So, all praise to the most high. Hey, kids, you know kids, you get them something to eat, they, mm, mm. <laughs> Hey, don't it? The kids be all mad. Then you give them something to eat. They be mmm, 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 mmm. kids when they get food, they get it, they get happy. Same with us. We get some food, we get happy. But the problem is we're killing ourselves when we overindulge in it. We eating too much. And the things we eating is not good for us. Right? Come on, read it again. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Go ahead. Nor too greedy upon meats. And don't be too greedy upon meats. You can't look, brothers. I know y'all like to throw down. Joe Judah. I know you a man. I know you the man when it comes to the grill. But we can't eat lamb and steak every single day. We can't eat fried chicken every single day. Go ahead. I was gonna say something. Go ahead. You we can't eat fried chicken. Also, Zakia, could you chime in on this for me, please? Could you could you grab the mic and chime in on this? Can you help a brother out? <laughs> Right, right. Kitchen Appreciation Week every week. You hear that? What, well, Officer Caleb? At? No, every no. every week. Every week is Kitchen Appreciation. So what y'all doing up here? Just Kitchen Appreciation. I know. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. Is that what we having today? Is that what we having tonight? Sir. Is that what we having tonight? Uh, kitchen Appreciation. Yes. yes what are we having for me? <laughs> we gonna have, uh, have chicken and lamb tonight. Chicken and lamb. Mm -hmm. Going down. Going down. Two. Too much meat. Too much meat. So I guess you know whoever getting some just gotta be proportionate, whatever they got right. going on. Right. His portions may not be like my portions. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. I can have a little bit bigger portion. That now like, my diet gonna start Monday. I, I, now I was gonna say that, tonight. Gonna say, see y'all. Right. Like, we see we said the wrong right. example already. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, you gonna have some brothers and sisters that may start to um, go without meat for a while after the feast is over with. Right, because it's a feast. So, we understand. It, it is a feast. So you, y'all want to jump in on that? Right. Y'all can shut it did down we did, for a little while. Did we, did we, do that last year? we did that. We did we that. We did that last year. We went 30 days no meat, and a lot of people lost weight. Right. But what happened when we hit our 30 day goal? I'm out. When we hit our 30-day goal, we went right back to eating it, right? We were supposed to have gained discipline over that time to stop and be and see the benefits of it. But, but what we really did was well, we was waiting for the 30th day. Right. Just like when you're fasting, you waiting for them to break bread. Right, right. They broke bread yet? They broke bread. I know. Some of y'all brother be fast and you get up and start walking around. Don't, have, don't want to listen to Leisha Clad. I know. I've been watching you for years. <laughs> I've been watching for years. You know you in the middle of fast. You're like, shoot, I'm going to get up, move around a little bit. Yeah, before I know it, leaves your class be over. I can eat me something. Yeah, I know. Read it again. <laughs> hey, but in a feast, we're supposed to enjoy the feast. The scripture said feast made for laughter. So you're going to eat, obviously. You're going to enjoy yourself, right? But during the weeks and during this time, in between our feast days, we should really be doing what? Preparing our bodies to be able to be in good, with good health, right? Go ahead. Be not unsatiable at any dainty thing. Nor too greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bring it sickness. And surfeiting will turn into cola. See that? Surfing will turn to cola, meaning what? Sickness or diarrhea, stomach pains. You eat too much excess of meats, it brings sickness. You know that a lot of these, a lot of these meats, when you look at it, a lot of them got that um what am I trying to say? You know how they, you know how when you eat too much meat, you get um it's uh and red meat. It gets like bacteria and stuff like that. Like even though you cook it, you know what I'm talking about, officer? Explain it for me. Go ahead. I think it's gout and stuff like that. You get the gout and stuff like that, too much meat. Too much red meat ain't good for you. It puts sickness, it put up fleam. You know you get flint flam, you get it in your chest or whatever. You ever eat a lot of meat and then you feel that in your chest, you start coughing up flame. Like, what the hell? I ain't even sick. It's because of the meat intake, because the meat holds sickness. Too much of it is is not good for you. Right, but in the South, what we learn, eat a lot of meat. Right, matter of fact, some of us growing up, we ate dinner with nothing but meat and white bread. Right or wrong? Right. Your mama gave you some chicken, or some steak or something, and you had some white bread. That's all you had. You didn't have no sides, no vegetables, or nothing, and you just ate it. 
We haven't learned how to eat. Some, some of them went to a grill. They just had, just had grill. Some of some of our lunches still be like that. Right, your lunch be like that. I, I can't lie. Okay, I'll pray. I'm cut. Well, good, good. I'm cut today. I ain't gonna I'm like, cut. <laughs> <laughs> All praises. That's what it's about. Key read verse thirty. Verse thirty. For excess of meats bring in sickness, and surfeiting will turn into cola. So surfeiting will turn into cola. So you want to live that life of sickness all the time? Continue to go against God's diet plan. But if you want to be healthy and have a good state of body, a state of body, follow God's diet plan. God said, eat in moderation, not to eat four, five, six times a day. Some of you, I'm gonna tell you what you can do. I'm gonna help you out. Anyone has ever heard of, heard of intermediate fasting? You've heard of it. Has any any of you tried it? You tried it. This is what you do. You take six hours. Some people do four. Some people do six. Six hours out the day. You eat, right? The other, what's the math? 18? The other 18 hours after that, think about it. The other 18 hours out the day, you fast. But you don't have to fast like you're not drinking water or nothing. You can drink water. You can drink ginger tea, turmeric tea, black coffee without no sugar, right, or creamer, right? You can, eat, you can drink and eat all these things, right, and it's going to help you do what? Slim down. You're going to see a difference. Your stomach is going to flatten. I'm telling you, sisters and brothers, it works. I've been doing I've been intermediate fast. I was 300 pounds when I went to Sierra Leone two years ago. The fattest i ever been in my life. Now I'm down to 240. I lost 60 pounds. Why? Intermediate fast. I only eat once or sometimes twice a day. And I don't eat till after 2 o'clock these days. So from 2 to 8, that's my eating window. That's when I eat, right? And I ain't talking about eat like pig out. I'm talking about I eat like I eat my vegetables. I get a hamburger every once in a while or some french fries and stuff every once in a while. But for the most part, during that window, I try to eat, you know, things, vegetables, salads, chicken salads, things like that. I know it hurt. I know you got the withdrawal from the fried chicken. I know it. You got to fight that thing. Go ahead, Austin. I was going to say, it's an example of that. You got some off over there? I just, I just going to say, uh, you know, uh, for you just exercising also, if you do happen to get a hamburger every now and again, just do a few more push-ups, man. Uh, two more laps around the block. You know, whatever it may be, to right. go ahead and burn that extra off. off and, and, and start with the diet first, because I haven't been in the weight room, right, like I used to be, right? But I wanted to change my diet first. Then I can get my exercise game on where it ain't as bad because it don't make no sense for me to work out and then go eat bad. You know, it, they counsel each other out. That's why the scripture tells us, um, uh, real quick, I know you about to say something else. Get 1 Timothy 4 and 8 real quick. Let me show you something. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Come on. But bodily exercise profited little. So bodily exercise profited little. He's not saying it doesn't profit. But it profits little. Go ahead. But godliness is profitable unto all things, mm -hmm. having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So pro uh, bodily exercise, it does profit, but it profits little if you're not going to change your diet. If you're not going to change your, change your food intake. You can work out all you want, but still eat three, four, five times a day. It's going to cancel it out. And you'll be looking at the scale like, I ain't losing no weight. Why can't I lose any weight? I work out twice a day. I do this. I do that. Because you haven't changed your diet to go along with what? Your uh, exercise. Go ahead. I was about to say something. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to uh, say it's an example of that in Judith uh, 8 and 6 about just um, maybe come to the feast days, eat. But, you know, during the week, you scale back. You know, we, uh, get that from me. Judith 8 and 6. Yes, sir. Judith chapter 8 and verse 6. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood. So this sister, you know, her husband died. She fasted her widowhood. She ain't fast, you know, her whole life, so she ain't starve herself out. Read. Save the eaves of the Sabbath. So she fasted, save meaning except the eve of the Sabbath. So when the eve of the Sabbath came, she ate. Read. And the Sabbaths. The Sabbath. And the eaves of the new moons. So the new moon came. You know, feast day is going down. Go ahead and make me a plate. I'm going to be in the spirit. I'm going to eat with my brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Read. And the new moons. So she ate the eve of the Sabbath. The new moons, the Sabbath, read, and the feast. And she ate on the feast days, read, and solemn days of the house of Israel. So when the feast days came around, like Feast of Unleavened Bread, I'm pretty sure she probably ate something all this week. She probably ate a little piece of Unleavened Bread, ate a little food here, ate a little food there. You got to put yourself in those positions of, okay, Passover came, seven days you got to eat some bread at least. So she's sister ate something, read. You want verse seven as well, officer? Is that it? 
That was it for verse 6. You want verse 7? No, nah, that's it. So the sister did eat, but once the Sabbath and the feast days was over, it says she went back to fasting. That's that discipline. So you come to the feast days, that's that example. That's all, officer. That's right. That's right. So y'all got that? All praise. Good health and a state of body. We got to change our diet. Hey, now, slow. Slow. Okay. Can I get something real quick? Yeah, yeah. We got to move on, though. Oh, sorry. Go, right. ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, let me get uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. Because a lot of times, it, you know, it's not what you eat. It's, it's how you eat and how much you eat. So going along with what Cap is saying and uh, what the officers is bringing out, this scripture goes with it. Read that for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. So it might, it, hey, it might be lawful, you know, uh, eating the meat, eating the uh, clean food, eating the salad. But when you get that salad and it's, you know, it's a mountain high a salad and you got uh, ranch dressing and every kind of dressing on it, you know, it's, it's no longer a salad anymore. You, you're taking in more calories than you actually need. Or you get the salad and you got uh, like, so we've been eating that Subway all week. You get the, uh, the tri oh, I, I don't want double meat. I want the triple meat triple on top of it. Salad. You know, you get the hamburger, but you don't get just the single meat. You get the triple and quadruple meat with the, with the cheese on it. You know, that's not ex it, it's not expedient, though. No. It's not good for you anymore. So read it one more time. All things are lawful unto me, uh -huh. but all things are not expedient. Hey, just because it's lawful don't mean it's necessarily good for the in for your intake, for your, for your health. So that's all I got on now. Hey, all praises. All praise to the most high. Now, favorite topic, marriage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Marriage. Um... Hmm. Okay, let's start off in the book of Sirach, chapter 7. So, we want strong marriages, right? We're going to show you biblical marriages, not um, what you think marriage is because you've been married for 20 years or 15 years or 10 years. You think you got it. Okay. Let's go into marriage according to scriptures. Uh, let's go to Sirach, chapter 7, verse 26. We're going to show you sisters what it means to be a help meet. We're going to show you, you husbands what it means to be a Lord, right? So let's show you that. Sirach 7 and 26. Sirach chapter 7, verse 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. The Bible says if you have a wife after your mind, don't forsake that sister. That's a good woman. Because she think like you think. You thinking about going to the feast day? She like, yeah. When we going? That's right. You say, hey, we ain't going to the Sabbath this week. She like, what? Why? What? What? Right. She 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 on, she trying to figure out what's going on. Why? Why we ain't going to the Sabbath? Why we not going around the family? Is everything okay? You sick? You good? Let me take a temperature. You all right? You know what I'm saying? She want to know it makes everything good with you because she think like you think, right? When it comes to finances, she think like you think. She think about savings because you thinking about saving, right? When it comes to the children. She don't want to call with you. When you say, hey, no, nah, we're not doing that. They're not watching that. They're not doing this. They're going to bed at this time. She say, you know what, my Lord? All oh, praises. I was thinking the same thing. Let's do it. Right? She not at, Don't forsake a woman like that. But the bottom part of the precept, keep reading. But give not thyself over to a light woman. A light woman is a hateful woman. She hateful. She mean. Uh, she can't take correction. She don't like to deal with you when you're trying to get on her about things that God says she needs to improve on. You don't want no woman like that. You single sisters that's single, that want to be married, don't be that sister. Don't be that hateful, always got the conniving, want to get back real for real. Every time he say something, I got to have the last word. Don't be that sister. Don't be that sister because your house going to be troubled, sis. I'm telling you. Same thing with you brothers. Your house going to be troubled. You always arguing and all this stuff. Y'all ain't on one accord because y'all always arguing. How you on one accord and y'all always arguing? That's not what the Bible's talking about. The Bible says, get 25 and 1, Sirach 25, verse 1. Your mind is supposed to be like my mind, right? And vice versa, my mind and your mind, we on one accord. We think the same. But the only way to get in line and thinking the same, y'all both got to think Bible. If you're trying to go off your thoughts and her thoughts, of course it's going to be different because you two have two different backgrounds. You grew up in two different areas, possibly. Age is different. Right? Mothers and fathers was different. Religion was probably different. So you think different. Right? But when you come to agreement, you want to come to agreement according to what? The Bible. Right? Sirach 25 verse 1. Come Sirach on. Sirach chapter 25 verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. So what he's about to list is beautiful before God and men. Meaning when God sees it, he said that's a beautiful thing. And when other men see it, they say oh, that's a beautiful thing. Come on. The unity of brethren. Brothers being un in unity. 
The love of neighbors. Having love for your brothers and your sisters, keeping the commandments, read. A man and a wife that agree together. That's, that's the most beautiful thing in the eyes of God. When a man and a wife agree together, we are one accord, right? How do we know? Get Hebrews 13 and 4. This is your precept. In Hebrews, it's going to say the same thing, but use different words. Right here it says, this is a beautiful thing before God and man, a man and wife that agree together. Watch this. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Come Hebrews on. chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. What's that first three words or Ma first five words? Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. The first, the first union the Lord brought together was marriage. He brought Adam, he made Adam, and he took from his rib his wife Eve. He created the woman from the man. Right? Give me that. You know what I want? In uh, 1 Corinthians 11. But it says, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So you brothers that got a whoremongering spirit, you in the DMs of women, you DMing women, going behind your wife back, talking to sisters, text messaging women, which I don't believe none of you are doing that. But just in case the thought crosses your mind, that's not a good thing in the eyes of God. God says he will judge you. You women that have that adulterous spirit, right? You're always looking at what the world got, what this person got, what that person. Oh, my ex-man, he got this. Oh, look, he's happy now. Oh, he divorced? Word? Oh, he doing well for himself. Mama told me I should have married him instead of your broke bind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know the spirit come on women sometimes, especially when you've been with somebody for a long time, Right? But the Bible keeps that flame going in your marriage. Doing what God says keep the flame going. You go against God, you're going to have trouble in your marriage. For, for sure. It's, it's a guarantee. Right? So he said he's going to judge whoremongers and adulterers. He's going to judge them. Right? Get the scripture I told you get. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. So the woman is of the man. You're a part of us. Never forget that. You are a part of your husband. The Lord set you up, brought you into this earth for you to marry that man. You may be like, no, you crazy. That ain't true. I, I, I was supposed to be with Tyrone. I wasn't supposed to be with him. Nope. The Bible says y'all were appointed from where? The beginning. That's right. The Bible said from the beginning, he knew who your husband was going to be, who your wife was going to be. The Lord already knew it. So then now you mad with the man that the Lord gave you. Are you mad with the woman that the Lord gave you instead of fixing it? Some of you not willing to fix it. That's why you're going through hell right now. That's why it's back and forth. That's why it's chit-chatter. That's why there's infidelity. That's why there's adultery. That's why there's hatred. Because you're not willing to submit to the man that God gave you. Or you're not willing to be um, committed to the woman that God gave you. That's why. That's why it's issues in your marriages. I'm telling you. Right? Read that scripture again. But the man is not of the woman. So the man not of the woman, sisters. We weren't put on this earth to serve you. We just weren't. Don't get that out your mind. It's not biblical. Read. But the woman of the man. You were meant to serve us in righteousness. Not saying you got to get out on your knees and crawl on the ground and follow, us behind, follow behind us like a dog. That's not what the Bible's talking about. Submission is not slavery, sisters. Stop thinking that. To be submissive to your husband, that's not slavery. We're not telling you to put a dog collar around your neck. and we're not, That's not what commitment is. When you are submissive, submissiveness is. When you're submissive, it's meaning that you give your Lord, your husband, the reverence and the respect to lead. Allow him to be able to lead in righteousness according to the scriptures. You're, you're a help meet. So meaning there are times where he will fall short and you're there to pick him up. But some sisters, they like when their husband fall so they can tear him down even worse. That's not the spirit of God. Right? Read it again. For the man is not of the woman. Go ahead. But the woman of the man. The woman is of the, woman is of the man. God created you from us for us. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. The man wasn't created for the woman. Adam was already there, cool, by himself. Didn't know what a woman was. God on earth. Right? Right? Had control of everything. Right. Name the animals and everything, right? The brother was a God on earth. He didn't need no woman. He didn't know what a woman was. The Lord said, hey, you know, it ain't good for him to be by himself. Let me make a woman or his help me for him to help him. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. The woman for the man. 
You was made to help us. We was made to guide and lead you. That's what the scripture is saying. So allow your husband to guide and lead you. Does he fall short? Yes. Does he make mistakes? Absolutely. He trying to get himself together. Many of us didn't know nothing about the Bible or being a good man until we came into the truth. We was whoremongers, adulterers, fornicators. Um, some brothers was putting their hands on their wives and their women that they was with in the world. Choking them out, doing all kind of stuff. You'd be like, damn, that dude crazy. But then God transformed that man to a man of God. Now he bring the Bible to you and say, hey, babe, look, let's start reading this. Let's start getting right with this. And you mad. What the hell? Oh, it was okay when I was beating you and cheating on you. Everybody loved me. Your mama loved me. Your auntie loved me. Everybody want me around. But as soon as I decide to change according to the scripture and get right with God, now I'm in a cult. Now you don't love me anymore. Now, oh, the love is going grown cold. I don't feel like you're the same person. I ain't supposed to be the same person. I'm supposed to be new because what I was was evil. Now I'm trying to be right. Give me that satisfaction of saying, hey, you know what, my Lord? You have changed. I see the change in you. And if you can change, I'm willing to change. That's Not many sisters willing to do that. Not many. Give me Sirach 25, where it says a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress. I think it's verse 27. Nope, it's earlier than that. 20. Mm. Yeah, 23. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 23. Go ahead. A wicked woman abateth the courage. So uh, abateth mean, um, when, when it said a wicked woman abateth the courage, the brother has no courage to speak to her now. Because she, ha, 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 she yells, she screams, she cuss, she get mad, she slam doors. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Make it a heavy countenance. And the brother walk around sad because his wife just won't get right. She just won't listen to him. Y'all sisters got power, man. I be telling y'all so y'all don't understand. Y'all got power for everything to be smooth in the house. All you got to do is submit according to the scriptures. Now, when he, doing, when he falls short on, if he a man of God, he going to correct it. Right? But you can always make things better just by how you receive information and instruction. Tell you. It, it, it's a soft answer, turn away wrath. I could be mad as hell. And you say, my Lord, what's that? All right, baby. Come here. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how you do? You be mad a little bit. And your wife be real calm and cool. And your whole calm down. You, you, be, you, you apologize. You say, you know, I apologize. I, I was a little frustrated. I was a little frustrated. I apologize. That soft answer just, whew. it's hard to be mad when you cool. It's hard. I can't fight myself, like you said. Read 23 again. A wicked woman abated the courage. Read. Make it the heavy countenance. Read. And a wounded heart. So that brother's sorrowful because his woman won't get right. Read. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress. So he already stressed out from the world. Read. Make it weak hands. You make his hands weak. Read. And feeble knees. And feeble knees. That brother in depression. That brother walking around here sad, sloped over, showed. Man, bro, you didn't got short. Bro, I thought you were 6'6". Six, six. You come in this brunt, five nine. What the hell happened to you? He, his nose on the ground. You're like, bro, pick your head up, brother. Get some sand. You sorrowful, my brother. Pick yourself up, right? So the scripture is trying to teach us how to get, how to be, uh, have a righteous relationship, a righteous marriage, right? Go to First Peter three. First Peter chapter three. So we're trying to get on one accord, man. We're trying to get ourselves together. We're trying to have a happy life, right? We're trying to have a happy life. Now, brothers, for those of you that are homebodies, don't like to do nothing, you got to take your wife out. Y'all brothers understand that? For you brothers that just go to work, go to camp, come home. Go to work, camp, come home. Go to work, go to camp, come home. You're destroying yourself. You're destroying your marriage. You got to do things with your wife. They want to go and dress up and look nice. They want to hold your arm and go to the movies and things of that nature without the kids. For those of you that hate, <laughs> hate letting people keep your kids, you want your kids up under you all the time. And listen, I've done that three times. It don't work. You understand? Thank God my sister-in-law moved around the corner. Hey, y'all can hold the kid. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got them? Whew, thank y'all. Put some stress off me. So I can, me and my wife can, help, we can enjoy each other. We can go out to eat and not have to worry about what's going on with them. I ain't checking my phone every 24 seconds. You understand? A 24-second shot clock on my phone. Everything at 24 seconds. I'm eh, eh, eh. God, leave the kids, all right? You understand? You don't need that. Sometimes you got to leave the kids at the house. If they're old enough to take care of themselves, that's one thing. If not, you might have to find a babysitter that you trust. Go out with your wives, brothers. 
Y'all understand? Because some of you, you you um you tear your house down, right? By not going and doing things, spending time, right? You gotta have a little romance in there, right? Don't be calling the queen and stuff like some brothers. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 33. <laughs> that was in the past. He repented from that, that, that particular brother. All praise. She ain't no queen. Go to 1st. <laughs> She's a princess. 1 Corinthians 7, 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 33. Start at 32. 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. That's why you see the single brothers and single sisters, we tell you what. Put your hand to the plow. Put in work for the Lord because you're unmarried. Read. But he that is married. But when you become married. Read. Care for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. So I hate amusement parks with a passion. I do not like to go to SeaWorld, uh, Fun World, all the worlds. I hate them. Okay. All the worlds. I don't like them. Go karts. I don't want to do none of that. Right. I'd like to chill at the house. But my wife. And my children like to do things like that. And they're young. So what do I do? I, swall I just say, I'm going to swallow this pill. I'm going to take them out. And guess what? I end up having a really good time. Because at first, I really don't want to go. I rather just chill at the house. But when I go, I end up having a good time. I see the kids enjoying themselves. My wife enjoying herself. I notice when we do those type of things, she be real happy. So I'm going to make my baby happy. She want to go out. The girls want to go out. That don't make you weak because you take your wife out. You know that, right? That does not make you weak because your wife say she's tired of always sitting at the house. She want to go somewhere. And you say, no, nah, woman, shut up and sit down. We, that, that don't make you weak to say, all right, babe, where you want to do it? I got camp tomorrow, but Sunday, we ain't got nothing we doing. What you want to do? It's your day. What you want to do? We can go anywhere, right? You have to do that to keep that marriage strong. You got to go out with her. You can't always say, oh, no, I'm going to just be with the brothers. I'm going to be with the brothers. I'm going to be with the brothers. You ain't laying with the brothers. You shouldn't be doing that. That's wicked and evil as hell, by the way, anyway. But the brothers ain't, the, ain't who you going home to. They're not cooking for you. They're not taking care of your children. So you have to, if you have to keep a good balance, you have to have a balance of putting in work for the Lord, your job, hanging out with the brothers, and your wife. You have to, right? Because the scripture says... Read it again, verse 33. Verse 33. But he that is married, care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So take her out. Be romantic. Take her out to eat. Stop being cheap. Go ahead and buy a little, you know, $40, $50 meal. It is what it is. Right? And then, you know, we got kids in here, so I can't say afterwards. But afterwards, you do what you, you do, what you do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do what you do. You feel me? Hebrew 13 and 4. Right? You do what you do. Same with your sisters. Right? Cater to your Lord and go home and, you know, keep the, keep the spark alive. Keep, keep, keep hope alive. That's it. Keep hope alive. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Uh, let's start at verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that, that your prayers be not hindered. So you brothers... Deal with your wives according to knowledge. The knowledge is God's commandments. Teach your wife the commandments, right? Sisters, receive the commandments. It's going to make everything real smooth. All you got to do is just receive. Hey, sister, just receive it. Just take it. It's the scriptures. I'm, I ain't telling you my own words. It's coming from the Bible. Just humble down. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. When it says give honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, meaning you got to be patient with her, right? You have to be patient with her because it's something she don't understand. Some things that she don't get. So you have to be a little patient at times. Now, the patient run thin when we're telling you and telling you and telling you and you, start, and you don't do it. That's when our patients run real thin because you've been warned. You've been told over and over. You just decide to be rebellious. That's not being submissive, sisters. That's not being submissive. I shouldn't have to tell you every single day the same thing. I should tell you once, maybe twice, and you should be able to get it. Why? Because it's coming from the Scripture. Because you should have wrote that Scripture down and studied it on your own time. Right? Go ahead. So we don't want our prayers to be hindered. Read that again. Because some of y'all say, uh, we praying for our house. We can't get one. We praying for a car. They want, can't get one. We in this apartment. There's seven of us in this little three-bedroom apartment. Why, 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 Lord, why? 
Because you're not submissive and because you're not dwelling, her, dwelling with her according to knowledge. That's why. Read it again. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Y'all are heirs together of the grace of life. The things that y'all want in y'all marriages, y'all get that together. You, you understand that, right? Like, you don't get the keys to the house if she don't get a key. You feel me? You don't get a key to the car if she don't get a key. Vice versa, sisters. Some of you might have good credit, better credit than your husband. I wouldn't advise you to get no house in your wife's name because she might bug out and you be out on the street. Don't do it. You keep the preeminence. But some of you sisters may have the credit to help get a car for your husband or whatever the case may be, right? But at the end of the day, y'all, it's y'all's together. That's your husband's car. That's your husband's house, right? So the Bible says we're going to be great. We're going to be heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. We hinder our prayers when we always into it, when we not following what we read. When we don't follow this, that's when our prayers are hindered by God. That's when we've been praying on something for years and years and years and it never happened. And we're looking up our upside God here. Like, you ain't going to help me? You ain't going to just hear us down here praying? No, you can't do that. You got to look at each other, look at yourself, say, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's, must be, it's a riff here in our marriage that's causing us not to be able to fully get the things that we're praying for. Right? Keep reading. Finally, be ye all of one mind. There you go again. Be of one mind. Having compassion one of another. Some I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with the sisters now. Some of you sisters, you don't have compassion for your husband. You say you want an example? Okay. Your husband come home, right, and he done had a long day, right? And you can see it, and it's because you know your husband. Come on, y'all been together too long for you not to know when something's bothering him. He come home, he's bothered. You can see he's bothered. And the first thing you say is, past due. I thought you said you were going to pay that. Oh, the kids got to do such and such. You say you was going to take little Timothy to the park. You said it. You're like, man, hold up, hold up, hold up, woman. I just walked the damn door. You know what I'm saying? Give me a chance to shoo, woo sigh. Right? Let me get a go. Take me a shower real quick. Get clean. Like Officer said, get this Esau dust off me. You understand? Let me go and get this dust off me real quick. Then come back. We can reconvene. Have some food ready. How can you even have no class on or listen to some righteous music cleaning up? Why when I come through the door, the first thing you do is throw me at bills and stuff like that. What you do today? Ain't you at home all day? What the hell is this? You understand? So don't do that. Have compassion on your husband. Right? Have some compassion on that man. Especially when you know the world trying to tear him down. You know he a black man in America, right? That's the toughest position to be in in the world. Black men in America, they treat us like dirt. Case in point, did y'all see what a lieutenant from the Army got pulled over by the police and they pepper sprayed him? This man is a high-ranking member in the United States Army. He fought and put his life on the line for this country just to come home and get pepper sprayed and racially profiled. That's a classic example of the black man having it hard in this society. But not only do he have it hard and he oppressed outside, he walked through the door and you oppress him. You're out of order. Read. Having compassion one of another. Read. Love as brethren. So it said compassion one of another. Brothers have to have compassion as well. You have to be compassionate with your rib, right? Sometimes she's going to jump out the spirit. Sometimes she's going to come whisper in your ear things that she think is wrong in the congregation. And you got to have some compassion to say, sis, that ain't right. Just fall back, okay? Now, but you, have, you can't rebuke her sharply all the time, although you should at first. But... I said the second time, rebuke the hell out of it. First time, you might have a little compassion. She don't know, right? Second time, I'm rebuking you. What the hell? You coming back with this? Come on, sis. Go ahead. Love as brethren. Love as brethren. Brethren do things together. Like, we brothers, right? We go out to eat together. We enjoy each other. We laugh and talk. Some of you don't laugh and talk with your husband's wife at all. You don't do it. Y'all just sitting there, just be quiet. She on her phone, you on her phone. That's not marriage. What did our forefathers do before this was invented? I wonder what they did. They was, all on, they was all on each other, enjoying each other, right? Tell your wife, come sit in your lap sometime, brother. Hey, baby, come sit over here. Come sit right here. I sit right here, baby. I'm going to talk to you for a minute, right? That's what you got to do. That make her feel like a woman, right? Go ahead. Be pitiful. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil. Not rendering evil for evil. So she jumped out the spirit, do some evil. So guess what you do? You gonna retaliate? Oh, oh, she gonna leave them draws in the middle of the floor? Oh, you say that the woman said, oh, he gonna leave them draws in the middle of the floor? Okay, I got something for him. When he come home, the trash gonna be sitting right there. And I'm gonna make sure he know that if he can do that, I can do this. That's rendering evil for evil. Or he say some evil to you, and just because you got that mouth, you always had it. 
you take the opportunity to tell him about all the wicked stuff he did six months ago that he done forgot about. He's like, sister, you remember that? How long you been holding that in? The hell? You know how y'all do? Hold stuff in for months, then just bring it out all of a sudden. Well, you ain't say that when something like, God, dog, man, that's crazy. I thought we was over that. Let the pad, let the pad be passed. So the hell it is. Read. Not rendering evil for evil. Read. Or railing for railing. Railing for railing. You cuss her out, she cuss you out. Vice versa. You shouldn't be cursing your wife and husbands out, by the way. You shouldn't. That's not godly. But if that were to happen, or you speak evil to one another, the other one doesn't come back and render that same evil or that same railing. Come on. But contrary wise, blessing. Shalom, my Lord. Some of you sisters are afraid of that thing. You're afraid. You don't do it. Because when you talk to your mama, he's Jim. He's James. He's John. He's Bartholomew. He's uh, uh, Rodriguez. Yeah, you know Rodriguez. You, know, you look like, damn, I was, I, was, I was your Lord when sister such and such from IUIC called. But when your mama called, they said, who that in the background? That John in the background? Like, yeah, that's John. <laughs> nigga. Yeah, he's still a nigga, mama. Damn. Instead of saying, no, nah, that's, yeah, that's my Lord. A brother told me he was over his mom and dad's house. And she said, his wife said, my Lord, would you like such and such on your plate? And the mama said, hold up. What you call him? Your Lord. What you mean, Lord? I ain't calling no man Lord but Jesus Christ. Amen. And he was like, so they let her go off. She going off, going off, going off. He said, he just sat there. He just watched. Then he looked over at the daddy. The daddy over there like this. She, I ain't saying nothing. She, you ain't never been, you ain't got to sleep with her at night. I ain't saying nothing. Right? She a dragon. So the wife says, mama, I call my husband what I want to call my husband. I'm calling him my Lord. And we about to leave because I feel like you disrespected my Lord. Shalom. I said, all praises to the most high God. Ain't that right? <laughs> okay. <I'm laughs> I see who's gonna clap. <laughs> hey, all praise. That's sister the spirit. You don't let your mama disrespect your husband? The hell it is. Just like my mama ain't coming to disrespect my wife. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, bro. Hold up, bro. Like, you know, I get real, you know, when it comes to my rib, I don't play that, right? So we've been together too long. So my daddy, love my daddy, my daddy. If he disrespect my wife, it's gonna go from pops to bruh, bruh. Hold up, bro. You know what I'm saying? You disrespect my rib again, you can get the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Because why? We won flesh. I got your back. You got my back. Ain't nobody disrespecting you. Vice versa. Ain't nobody disrespecting me in your eye. That's how it's supposed to be. But when you low-key don't respect your husband, you will let other people disrespect him. When you don't love your wife or really, truly respect your wife, you will let other people talk about her. I'll give you an example. In the world, you, when you're trying to get with a sister on the side, she said, well, I thought you was with old girl. And you'll be like, uh, nah, we ain't together no more. It's not good because you should have been with her anyway. Her had a nap and then she should have started talking about it because you want some from this sister. You will let her disrespect your girl. Right or wrong? Yeah, okay, yeah. So brother's quiet. That happened. It happened. You will let a side piece talk bad about your wife or your girl. Right or wrong? Exactly. Same thing with the women. You will let him speak evil of your, of your man because you wanted to get your rocks off or whatever you were. That was the old us. That was when we was in sin. Now we in righteousness. We understand we want flesh. Me and my wife want flesh. You ain't speaking evil or evil to her or about her, right? Not in, not in my presence. It should be the same thing for y'all. You shouldn't let no, nobody speak evil of your husband if you love him and you respect him as a Lord, right? Matter of fact, read verse 6. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Wait a minute. It says Sarah obeyed Abraham, and she called him what? Lord. She called him Lord. Go ahead. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well. So you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm pretty sure sometimes your husband say something and you say, yes, sir, right? You do realize that sir is a synonym for Lord. Oh, they ain't know that. When you say yes, sir, to your boss at your job, you're saying, my Lord. <laughs> They don't understand what we're saying. You want to look it up? Can we look it up real quick for the sisters? The sisters that hate to call their husband Lord, but call, but to say yes, sir, in the same breath? I don't understand. Hey, and they, who they pay their rent to? They land. Lord. Wow. Mm. Hey, can you read that scripture one more yeah, time? Ahead, I, I just want one word out of that scripture. One word out of that scripture. Yes, sir. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back. Yes, sir. It, what did Sarah do? Obeyed Abraham. 
Boy, that that's terrible, ain't it, y'all? <laughs> All praise to the most high. That is a that's a that's a strange word, ain't it? Read it again. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Obeyed Abraham. Obeyed Abraham. All praise. I'm gonna stop right there. He read. Calling him Lord. She called him Lord. She called him Sir. Read. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well. You the daughters of Sarah, as long as ye do well. Go ahead. And are not afraid with any amazement. And you're not afraid with any amazement. You're not afraid about what people going to say about you for honoring and loving your husband. You're not afraid of that. Why? Because you understand you ain't got to live with me. Nor do you pay the bills here. Nor do you feed me. Nor do you take care of my children. My husband does. So you're not going to disrespect my husband. That's my Lord. That's what you're supposed to be saying. If you respect him. Let's get down to verse 10. Verse 10. No, skip nine, 9 again. Yes, sir. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing. The Lord want to bless our marriages. The Lord wants to bless our marriages. The issue is we don't want our marriages blessed because we're not willing to follow what God says the guidelines for our marriages are to make them great. Uh, oh, you looked that up? You did find it. Let me see. Look at the seminary. Oh, 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 uh, One having power and authority over others. Hmm. Oh, look at that. What did that say? Husband. Wow. In all caps. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hold on. The male head, the male head, the male head of a household. Oh, my goodness. It's about to get hot up in here, ain't it? Uh, your Lord is your husband, right? Go read, read the, 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 the F. F. One that has achieved mastery or that exercises leadership or great power in some area. Hmm. Go down. Let me see some synonym right quick. Right quick. Oh, it's say Jesus. Okay. You know what? Matter of fact, give me Ephesians chapter yes, 5, verse 22. <laughs> Somehow the Lord let us back I here. Knew Lord, have I mercy. knew it. The most high. Ain't, ain't he good? Won't he do it? <laughs> God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. All Boom. praise to the most high. We went Christian on him real quick. Law Hammer, you can drop that. We ain't even got to see it no more. We see Jesus. Okay, hey, we Cap. see Jesus. Hey, Cap. Uh, on that point, you, you just pulled down that definition. Sir is short for sire. The, the old word sire. Damn. So look up S-I-R-E and, and bring that up. Let's let's see what that says. Let's read the scripture. Yeah, yeah. Why he why he pulling it up? Let's read that script. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty two. Yes, sir. It's the book of Ephesians chapter five and verse twenty two. Uh huh. Wives, huh? Wives, huh? Wives. Then a comma. Go Sub ahead. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. I know that hurt. I know it hurt, but I enjoy bringing it out. You know why? Because I want to see my sisters have a successful marriage. You're right. I want my brothers to, if they do call me at three in the morning, it's to thank me. Say, hey, bro, I appreciate them scriptures. We just did, we just, we, hey, thank you. Shalom. But instead of calling me at three in the morning, they, this sister crazy. She done hit me outside, we fighting, cussing, arguing. I'd rather have that, that phone call. Okay, uh, oh, okay. Let's read that. Uh, the definition of sire, uh, father, male ancestor, uh, man of rank or authority. Hmm. Uh, Lord, Lord, especially Lord, used formally as a form of address and as a title. Mm, go down. See what else they got. Sire. Hmm. I think there's some synonyms real quick. Oh, dad, daddy, father, pop, papa. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Your Lord. That's the father in the house. Read it again. Why? Read again. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto Jesus Christ. You know, I always tell my wife, I just, I, I just wonder, sis, just me just thinking. What if Jesus Christ were to just somehow magically just descend from heaven and just fall right here in the midst? Big old black man, you know, muscular, beautiful garment on with a knife in his, with a sword in his hand. And he say, sis, I need spaghetti tonight. You're going to say, you're going to be so scared. So fearful, have so much reverence and respect that before he can get done saying spaghetti, you're going to be fixing it. 
But your husband call ahead and say, hey, you started on that chicken yet? Hey, yeah, yeah, squash that. I want spaghetti. We got ground beef in the refrigerator. Go on, make that for me. Shalom. He come home, you cooking chicken. What the girls wanted, what the son, what my son wanted, what I want, what, what I say I want it. Because Christ said, it said right here, you're supposed to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Correct. Keep reading. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. The head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh huh. And he is the savior of the body. Wait a minute. You sisters not getting the kingdom of heaven if you don't submit to your husband. You're not. You're not going to buck against your husband and then Christ turns, uh, all of a sudden shows up and then you say, okay, I'm ready to submit now. No, your head coming clean off. I know that hurt. It's scary, but it's the truth. It, the Bible said, read it again for the unbelievers. Read it. For the husband I mean, is that. Somebody might deep down in their soul, what, what uh, Country Wayne say, let that sizzle in your spirit. Right? Read it again. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. And he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. Your husband is the savior of the body. He's the savior in the house, sisters. When you submit to him and allow him to do what he needs to do as a man, he's going to help save you. How he going to help save you? Because he's going to teach you the gospel. Give me 1 Timothy 4, 16. Somebody might be saying, he ain't going to save me. That nigga can't save me. He can't even pay the car note. I got to work. Okay. 1 Timothy 4 and 16. First it is what Timothy. it is. Some wives got to work. It is what it is. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Drop the mic, man. <laughs> the Bible, he dropped it too. The Bible says you will both save yourself and those that hear you. Meaning what? If your husband's the savior of the body, he's guiding you, he's teaching you. If you listen, you'll be saved. If you buck, you're not getting salvation. Your salvation comes from your husband's salvation. When he gets honored, you're going to be honored. When we get put back in our place, they're going to honor y'all because they're going to respect y'all because y'all respect us and we're going to be the rulers. Right? Last scripture, Psalms 110, verse 4. Yes, sir. It has become slowly my favorite scripture. <laughs> the book wow. of Psalms, chapter 110 and verse 4. Come on. The Lord has sworn. Nope, read 3. Verse 3. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Hold on, read that again. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. You know what that means, sisters? When you see your husband, like the Bible says, he's truly going to be immortal, angelic, celestial. I know your husband may be short. He may be real tall and skinny, right? He may have, I don't know, some on his neck or whatever, scars on his back or whatever. But the Bible say when he get his power, you're going to be willing to submit. You're going to be honored. You're going to say, that's my husband right there. Yeah, that's my husband, me and these other six women. <laughs> and that's just a number of completion, by the way. Number there may be more. Hey, proud to be number four. Right, right. You be proud to be number one. You better be, you better take it. <laughs> Let me stop if I vex these sisters. They're going to get mad. They're going to send a letter to Bishop. Hey, man, Captain, you got to get a light down here saying we're going to have multiple wives in the kingdom. And Bishop's going to say, he's right. <laughs> Says that. Anyway, read again. I love you. Read again. Thy people but shall. Right now, be faithful to your one wife, brothers. Don't cheat on her. Don't disrespect her. Treat her right. But in the kingdom, you're going to be the man. Read again. <laughs> thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So when y'all see the angelic state that your husband is in, and when he's rich and powerful and has servants, you're going to be willing to submit in that day because you're going to see. That's the man right away. Say what Miskel said. The man right here. He going to be the man. Go ahead. In the beauties of holiness. In the beauties of holiness. You're going to see how beautiful he is, how holy he is. He ain't going to have no blemish, nothing. Go ahead. From the womb of the morning. He might have that big thick beard without the patches in like I got. Go ahead. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. We all praise to the most high. So with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.